Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's Threat Snapshot. So today we're going to be talking about a new member of the potato family. Uh, this is Local Potato, also known as CVE 2023-21746. And like the other potatoes in the family, this is a Windows Privilege Escalation attack. Uh, this, if you're familiar at all with these potatoes, the first one dates back to, I want to say, around 2016. This was with Hot Potato. And there's been several others in this family since. You've got uh, Juicy Potato, Rotten Potato, Sweet Potato. A uh, list goes on and on. Um, generally speaking here, how these work is they are going to relay uh, tokens or credentials, um, especially around Windows services that have impersonation privileges. And that's going to allow you to elevate privileges from a service account or a generic user to generally system especially for some of the more privileged service accounts. Uh, Windows, uh, I've got to give them credit. Initially, Hot Potato and some of these others were, you know, do not patches, but they have been issuing patches for these and closing them up. Uh, but yet this whole class of vulnerability is very interesting, and uh, there's obviously a lot of them here. There's probably additional potatoes out there that are waiting to be discovered. So let's talk a little bit more about Local Potato and what this is. So I'm going to, you know, link here in the video. Uh, this is the original, you know, author's threat research where they talked about how they discovered the attack, what the bug is and the underlying information definitely goes a lot deeper than what I'd like to cover in the snapshot. But at a high level here, this is abusing um, the NTLM authentication process and uh, within SMB. And there is a specific restricted field or reserve field that's there that um, they're able to um, use to get this privilege escalation. So local potato, there is a POC available. Um, this has been out for a little bit, but this is um, patched as of the latest uh, January 2023 patch. So if you want to be protected against this, that's the easiest way is just apply the patch now. Um, but this local potato attack is really just an arbitrary file read and write. Um, but that arbitrary read and write can allow us to do some interesting things. So let's take a look at two of these different attack scenarios in Snap Attack. So first one is going to be dumping credentials with local potato. Uh, so we are going to have a Windows victim machine set up here. Um, as the name local potato implies, all of the attack is happening within the Windows machine. We do have a Kali Linux attacker here, but that's really just going to show us dumping the credentials. So we've got local potato on the machine. We're going to run that here and we are going to really we're going to pull down the file for the um, the SAM. So if you're familiar with, um, you know, the, the SAM file, system file, some of those others where that credential information is stored, um, you know, in the registry and also on the file system, uh, we can pull this here from the volume shadow copy, copy that um, and here. We're actually doing the system file. We can pull that here. Um, you know, to a temp file, we can copy that over to our Linux machine. And then if I pivot over here, you know, we can show a little further in the video where we have that file. And then we're just going to use impacted secrets dump on the system file. And you can see here between the system, the SAM, you know, we can actually decrypt those uh, or, you know, obtain those password hashes could pass the hash, we could decrypt them. Um, but that is just one way that we can, uh, you know, abuse this um, arbitrary file read, pull back those files, and then, you know, use those attacks to dump the credentials. So def definitely some different detection opportunities here, specifically around this one. Um, if I were going to be hunting for this activity, you could take a look at, um, you know, basically pulling back those sensitive registry files. So this is a technique around the Valium shadow copy, um, where again, we can see the SAM file being pulled back. We can see the system file being pulled back by local potatoes. So um, this is definitely one strategy for detecting it. Um, this is another one that's looking for those uh, file paths on the command line. Um, you know, either of these would be good. You could deploy them with confidence. Uh, another interesting way of detecting local potato um, a little bit more generally um, so it is using the Winsock library, and as part of that, there's going to be some named pipe creation events. Um, so if your you know, EDR or endpoint tool can monitor those, um, there is a catalog change listener pipe that is created. 
Um, this is a legitimate pipe, but it is also very much impersonated by, you know, Cobalt Strike and a lot of other C2 frameworks um, because it helps blend in with the noise. But again, if you're going to filter out a lot of that, you know, what the, the noise is, so, you know, spool service, LSAS, you know, IIS process, um, you're going to see a lot of anomalies here like, you know, local potato. Um, you're going to see, I think, curb relay up. There's other tools that are using, you know, this, this socket, this process um, here. So looking for, again, rare processes that are, you know, creating this, this named pipe, um, that would be another interesting detection strategy here. Um, definitely you could hunt for that sort of activity because, again, they're going to be relatively rare. So just something interesting to kind of keep in mind. Um, let's talk about another way that we can do this, um, you know, privilege escalation with local potato. So this is actually going to be chaining another exploit. Um, this was also put out uh, earlier this week. So this is a local privilege escalation via the storage service. Um, this is a search order DLL hijacking vulnerability. Basically, there's a DLL that's missing. We can put that in a location and it's going to get picked up instead of where, you know, Windows thinks that DLL is going to be. So there is a POC available for this, and this, um, this attack is actually very easy to chain with local potato here. So again, the storage service is going to be looking for this DLL. It's sprint csp.dll. And again, if we can put that in a path um, that it's going to try and load, um, which is going it's going to execute our DLL instead of you know, where it thinks the DLL should be on disk, and that's going to be able to trigger the attack. So we can hop over here. This is, um, again, the privilege escalation threat um, using local potato and the storage service attack. Uh, can dive right in here. Let's watch the video and we'll, we'll see what we're doing here. So we are going to copy this malicious Sprint CSP DLL. Um, this is going to just run some information like who am I, what privileges I have. We're not doing anything super malicious here, but you could just as easily um, you know, have a reverse shell, you know, that could be a Metasploit beacon DLL or, a, you know, Cobalt Strike beacon DLL or some other thing. And then we're going to use local potato to copy that to a uh, folder. Um, in this case, we're just going to do Windows System 32, where other DLLs are. And then we can use the um, RPC client to trigger that. Um, you're going to see here that we're going to just check our user. Um, so we're just running as the regular user account here. And this RPC client is what's actually going to call um, that storage service, and that's going to trigger that DLL search order hijack. So that's actually been done. We're gonna take a look here, and we're going to see, um, like I said, that um, POC DLL that they provide is going to output some information. So you're gonna see that whoami.txt, and if we you know, type or cat that out, you know, we can see that we are running as NT authority system when that DLL is loaded and executed. So again, there's definitely detection strategies around this. Um, this attack also looks really interesting on the process graph. Again, we've got some interesting parent-child relationships and how things pop up. So, you know, we had our CMD, we ran local potato to copy that uh, Sprint CSP file over to this path. And then we ran RPC client, which is going to launch that storage service. The storage service is going to be running under the context of SVC host, and you're going to see these CMDs that are spawning. Um, so you can see this is SVC host, and the service is store SVC, and uh, again, it's, it's this parent command line. So we can see two of those run. We can see that who am I being generated here. Um, that's our malicious DLL that's being loaded. So um, definitely a very interesting and anomalous path there, which is uh, a great for detection opportunity. So how would I detect this? Um, specifically, we're not going to be looking at the local potato here. We're going to be looking at the storage service exploitation. So two ways that I would recommend. Um, one of them, because um, local potato is using um, the internal network shares, um, like your C dollar sign shares via SMB, uh, Windows Security Event uh, 5145 is going to be really effective at this. Um, this is a network share object. Um, was checking to see if it has permissions to copy over there. Um, so we're going to be looking for that file event for the um, Sprint CSP DLL. So we can see here that um, something is trying to see if it can copy a file to Windows System 32 Sprint CSP .dll. Um, So we can see you know, multiple of those uh, events that are being triggered. So that's definitely a good detection strategy. 
Um, another one here, again, we mentioned those rare parent-child relationships. Um, so we have the storage service, which again is going to be running as this uh, parent command line, um, SVC host.exe with a storage service um, service name. And really we're looking for any execution from it because storage service doesn't seem to be generating a lot of um, child processes normally. So when you see CMDs or PowerShells or other suspicious processes that are spawning underneath it, um, you know, hunting for those command lines um, for those ch child processes is definitely a good strategy here. Um, depending on your environment, this may also even be, you know, deployable as an alert. So definitely something that you can use in your um, operational environment today. Um, another thing I just kind of want to call out, and this is why you always have to test your detections. So obviously we love the S Sigma community, their repo. I mean, we pull that into Snap Attack. Um, when I was doing some of the research, was looking to see if there were any other detections around this, um, you know, the storage uh, privilege escalation. And there is this detection here, creation of non-existent DLLs and system folders. Um, this is also in Snap Attack, and this was a change that was added uh, yesterday for Sprint CSP. So they are looking for Windows file creation or file events where Sprint CSP is being um, placed. Um, the weird thing about this and what I wanted to just kind of call out and why you always have to test your detections, um, at least on Sysmon and in Windows, um, when it's doing that file write to the C dollar sign share, um, it's not picking up that file creation event. So we don't have any, um, you know, Windows Sysmon event ID 11 file creation events there. So um, would this work if you were using, um, you know, this exploit, um, this privilege escalation without using um, local potato? Uh, very likely, because again, this is looking for um, that creation of sprint csp.dll, but because it's being copied um, over the network via that SMB share, we're just a little bit blind to that telemetry here. So again, that's really the value here and why you need to test and validate your detections and have confidence in them when you deploy them. And that's really what snap attack is about. So that's our threat snapshot for today. Uh, this is a weekly series. Like, subscribe, comment below the video, and we'll see you next week.